Hi, I am Jacob Wagner, and in this tutorial I'm going to walk you through the new things in Clonus Plus Effectors version 1.1. The first version of Clonus Plus Effectors was released uh, about six months ago, and today hundreds of people are using it. So first of all, thank you to everybody who purchased this plugin. Obviously, when a lot of people is using a plugin, some of them also have user requests, and version 1.1 of Clonus Plus Effectors is trying to answer some of these requests. So, version 1.1 contains a few new features. It's not major features, it's just a lot of small things that is going to make the plugin even better than it already is. The first new feature that I want to show you is the ability to duplicate an entire uh, cloner system. In some situations, you want to have two cloner systems on top of each other that are almost the same, but not completely the same. In that case, you want to start out by creating a new cloner system that is exactly the same as the one we just created. And there's really no smart way to do that in the last version, other than just to start over basically and uh, add a new cloner system and make sure you put in all the same values and you're going to get the same cloner system. But in version 1.1, if we roll over the plus button, you can see that it says hold shift to duplicate. So we can do just that, holding down shift on the keyboard and click the plus. And it's going to duplicate the cloner system that we already have. So you can see now we have one saying cloner blue, one saying cloner blue copy. And we can also see if we look at our layers that we have a new cloner and a new effector, and we have that for both of them. So this is an exact copy of the one we already have. This is why we can't see any difference in our composition because they are exactly the same on top of each other. What we're going to do is we're going to change the new one we created just a little bit. First I'm going to rename these so that it's just easier to work with. I'm just going to call this cloner white and I'm going to call the effector cloner white effector one. So I now have a cloner blue and a cloner white. As you probably have already guessed, I'm going to use the white circle layer for the new cloner system. So I'm going to select that and click use selected layers. I will now go into cloner white effector one and I'm going to change this end property, drag it down a little bit so that it's going further down uh, than minus 100. And we can see now the effect over here is that we're getting these blue ends into our animation. Let's just play it back. Maybe just uh, hide the effectors. And obviously the blue is uh, the blue uh, system that you can see underneath the white system. But because they're not exactly the same, you're getting this effect. So this is just one option that you could do with this. Obviously the possibilities are limitless. All right, so that was the first uh, feature, the ability to duplicate a cloner system by holding down shift. In version 1.1, we now have a small button down here, which is a settings and tools button. And if you click it, it will take you to settings and tools. And if you click it again, it's going to take you back to your normal settings. So it's a toggle, of course. In here, we will find some more new features. Uh, the first one is Windows 10 plus high DPI. There is a bug in After Effects that causes everybody who have Windows 10 and a high DPI display, like a 4K screen or 5K screen, to only see half of what's in drop boxes. So this is a fix of that. If you have this problem that you only see half the content in the drop down boxes, just enable this and the problem should be fixed. 
if you do not have this problem, do not check this on. So this is just a workaround for this ignoring After Effects bug. So let's move on to the next new feature, which is the ability to keep or not keep your unbaked data. And to demonstrate that, I'm just going to remove the white cloner. No, please. So we still have this animation with the, with the blue one. I'm just gonna have only one just to make this whole demonstration a little bit simpler. So if I click bake now, it's going to bake the animation the normal way, uh, the same way as it always have done. It's going to keyframe all the layers uh, so that the animations are no longer done with expressions, they're now done with keyframes. And that's gonna make the animation faster to work with, but it's also gonna disable the ability to make any changes to the cloner system. However, you have this on bake button that you can click. This is great because you can get all your settings back. However, in order to make this work, it was necessary to keep a lot of data down here. So we still have our cloners and effectors, and if we unshine these, you can also see that the clones themselves, even though they're baked, they still have some data stuff on them. And this was all necessary in order to create this unbaked functionality. So one of the users said, what if I don't want that? What if I don't want the ability to unbake? Can I just delete all that unnecessary data and just be left with keyframe layers? And that's what the new feature does. So I'm just gonna unbake this and I'm gonna go into settings. And we now have this drop down and you can choose always, which is the same as it has uh, worked with originally, or you can choose never, so it's never going to keep the unbaked data, or the option that I like the most, which is ask. So it's just gonna ask me every time I bake, do you want to keep your unbaked data? Let's go back and let's try to bake this again. Now when we click bake, it's going to say, do you want to keep the unpacked data? And this time I'm going to say no. It will still take the animation into keyframes, but it will no longer, uh, but it will no longer keep all the unbaked data. So you're just left with your clones that are being animated. Just as they were before, you have no settings for them anymore. And as you can see, the cloner doesn't recognize this as a cloner system anymore because it's not. It's no longer a cloner system, it's just layers that are keyframed. Now, the good thing about this is that if you have to send this to somebody who does not have cloners plus effectors, they can open this up without getting any error messages or anything like that. Um, the bad thing is, of course, that you completely lost the ability to unbake it. If you've done this by accident, you can always undo this operation. So you can click Command or Control C to uh, undo. And we're going to undo the bake operation. So that is baking without keeping the unbaked data. However, there is another user who said, what if I just want to use Clonus Plus Effector to set up my layers in a specific shape? And I then want to remove all the cloner functionality. Um, but I don't want to animate anything. In those cases, there are no reason for the plugin to create keyframes on all the channels that are being affected because they're not animated. So I'm going to try to set this up a little bit different to demonstrate this. First, I'm going to remove this effector and I'm going to use a radial instead. And I think I want to have 20 clones this time. Maybe I will change the radius a little bit. Something like this. And I will add a new effector. 
still want it to be a plane effector with a radial fall off and it should still be sign. I'm going to affect the position and I'm going to take my effector and move it over here and go into position and I'm going to change the x value to kind of drag these out a little bit and let's change the size of this also. So now I've created this kind of like X shape and maybe that's all I wanted to use the plugin for. If that's the case, then at this point I want to click bake and I want to say no, do not keep the unbaked data. So the first thing you're going to notice is that the bake option was very fast this time because it didn't have to use any keyframes. It knew that nothing was animated so there's no reason to add keyframes. And all you're left with is these layers uh, which are positioned in the pattern that you have created and you can do now with them whatever you want to do with them. So the last user request is a request I've had from a lot of people. It's uh, the ability to use audio to animate these clones. So uh, people have been asking for a audio effector, which unfortunately is impossible to do. So with the current setup of cloners plus effectors, it just is not possible. However, you could do it if you added a layer effector and then created a layer that responded to the music. It was a little bit difficult to set up. So what I've done with version 1.1 is that in settings and tools I've added a button called create audio setup. And that's gonna make this much easier for you to do. First, I'm going to need some audio. I have this very short track down here. To create your audio setup, the first thing we want to do is we want to select the audio file and then go into settings and tools and click the create audio setup. It's going to create a layer for you which is responding to the audio track that you have selected. If you go into effect controls for this audio setup layer, you're going to see that we have a lot of things in here and you don't need to worry about most of these things. So I'm just going to start collapsing these and you can just do the same to begin with. Then you're left with these options down here which is controls that I've added to control this things that I thought was important to control. So the first thing I want to do is I want to turn off the CC white time. And I'm going to explain to you in a moment why that is. But for now, just know that it is slowing down your workflow. So it's also always good to turn it off to begin with. Then let's try playing this back. And as you can see, it's, it's playing the audio. And all these stripes are behaving accordingly to the audio. So the left side in this case is the, the lower tones in your audio and the right side is the, is a higher tones. So the whole idea about this is that you use the cloner setup to create kind of like a, an audio visualizer. It's important. I'm just going to find a good frame here. Let's take this one. It, it's important that all of these clones have their own stripe. So we need the same number of stripes as we have clones. In this case, the number of clones says 10. So that's cool. We have uh, 10 clones and we have 10 number of clones in our setting here. Then we're going to adjust the scale. So we're going to adjust this so that they all have their own stripe. And it doesn't have to be perfect. What's important is just that their registration point is on top of their own stripe. If they overlap a little bit, doesn't really matter a lot. Then I'm going to go back to my normal settings 
and add an effector. And I'm going to add a layer effector. And I wanted to affect the position. And we go into effector settings for the layer effector and change the source layer to be the audio setup that we're creating. Then we go down to position and set position down to maybe uh, minus 800, I think is probably. That's everything we need to do. Now these are animating to the audio track and it needs to cast it a little bit before it's gonna look really good. But eventually it's going to get back. The unfortunate thing about this workflow is that the layer effector is by far the slowest effector that we have in here. So you should not expect to have blazing speeds uh, with this workflow. However, it is going to create this audio visualizer effect and it is going to work. So I'm just gonna switch off the audio layer. You don't have to see this in order for this to work. So in this case, we only have our, our clones jumping up and down. Let's just end this here at five seconds. We see that it works, but we can also see that they are moving very, very fast up and down. And what the CC white time it does is that it kind of spreads them out a little bit. It, it kind of, uh, it's not a real easing, but instead of just going from the top to the bottom and to the top again, it's going to slow down a little bit so that it's going to be a much nicer and smoother animation. Unfortunately, it's also going to be more heavy, so it takes longer time to to render and longer time to cache. And this is why I say I only put it on in the end. When you work with it, turn it off, then and then turn it on again. Okay, so there's a lot more to say about this audio setup here. Um, but there's so much to say that I thought it should have its own tutorial. So for now, I'm just gonna end it here and I'm gonna leave it to you to play around with this. And very soon, uh, maybe even tomorrow, I'm gonna have a new tutorial ready for you, which explains in depth how to use this audio setup. So that was everything for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching it. Remember to follow me on social networks to get updates when there are new features or when there are new tutorials or source files that you can uh, download and try out. If you have never tried it before, you should go to aescripts.com slash cloners plus effectors and you can download a trial of this application if you will, or you can of course purchase it. I will see you in the next tutorial.